May I, Ms. Anita, Mr. Kant, we are very privileged to have Mr. Chandrajit Banerjee, also sitting here, Director General of CI. He's had a smile on his face, I think, since he walked inside. I think he likes the budget. Um, he may have a comment or a question for you. No, uh, I mean, uh, uh, my question or uh, rather a comment uh, to Mr. Kant would be, he is the Sherpa, the G20 Sherpa and uh, today and that's a huge opportunity for india this year so what he would he see as a, a couple of key messages that he will carry to the global community on uh, on india's uh, from this budget about uh, the attractiveness of india as a destination to get more investments and act attractiveness of india as uh, more capital and what is india giving to the world to the G20 uh, 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 from this budget, what really comes out from, uh, I mean, he must have got some three or four important talking points for him for this year. Uh, uh, comment that you've made, and let me spell out a few. Firstly, uh, it highlights the transformational uh, focus, the political will to take India to a new era of growth, it demonstrates the political will of the government to build a new India. It uh, demonstrates the huge commitment to accelerate the pace of growth through cap uh, uh, CapEx expenditure and uh, enhancing it very, very substantially. It also uh, demonstrates that uh, India wants to build really top class quality infrastructure through airports, through railways. I mean, look at railways, 2.4 lakh crores, uh, you know, uh, outlay for uh, railway. Uh, that's uh, uh, almost a 500% jump over what it had in 2013-14. And uh, roads, uh, highways, etc. It also uh, focuses very strongly on travel and tourism. You know, 50 tourism destinations to be selected through a challenge route. And secondly, that uh, India, it wants to build an India which will be a decarbonized India. It wants to build an India which will be totally digital. So you are technologically pole vaulting through this budget. That is a big thing. And also it says that you are talking about one crore farmers to adopt natural farming uh, and putting in at a thousand uh, bio input resource centers. So uh, all in all, it's a budget for a green future. It's a budget for a uh, huge amount of technological leapfrogging. And that's what makes it an extraordinary budget. All right, Mr. Khan, thank you so much for joining us. You won't take up more of your time, but it was a pleasure speaking to you. Thank you so much. And with that, we're glad you got talking points at the G20 Sherpa meetings. Uh, you, you'll have a lot to tell them, as you've as you just told us. Thank you so much, Mr. Khan, for joining us. Right, uh, Mr. Banerjee, so um, overall, look, you always smile. Every time I've ever seen you after a budget, you always smile, so that's not necessarily an indication as to how happy you are. Uh, how happy are you, actually? You know, uh, uh, if uh, one looks at what was one was uh, talking uh, about uh, just 24 hours back, uh, most of what we were talking about for in terms of asks uh, have been tick marked, uh, and and it, that is what one uh, is happy about. What I particularly would like to under underline is uh, I see that there are some important uh, uh, facets in the budget which really will uh, define the growth path or the developmental path of, for the next few years for India to be a really a developed economy. Uh, one sec, uh, and I say that because, you know, I see focus on, uh, you know, many areas which like uh, uh, sustainable living, uh, ease of living, uh, looking at uh, uh, for the focus uh, uh, when we talk about, you know, uh, the townships, we talk about uh, even moving away from certain uh, certain uh, uh, traditional, uh, 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 you know, uh, ways uh, uh, that the, the, that one has been functioning. So I see that trend. There's a very overall macro sort of a view. But second, uh, what is 
what is, uh, one was uh, sort of uh, cautiously optimistic about uh, before the budget was whether we will see the continued focus on capex. Uh, and I was I, I, I use the word cautiously optimistic, and we do find uh, did find uh, the finance minister really being very aggressive on it, and that's that's great. You see, if you compare what uh, I mean, if you read it with the economic survey of yesterday. Uh, you see that the credit offtake in certain areas, even the MSMEs, that's taken off a 30% increase. Now, all of that is not going in OPEX, right? Some of it is going into CAPEX. So, obviously, private sector has started coming in. There is expansion in investment. So, this, this bet on really f focusing more on CAPEX has paid off, and I think private sector investments have started, and private sector in investment will increase. But very importantly, in that section, what I found interesting is asking the states to increase capex and giving that you know space to the states because through the you know that 50 year yeah so that's important and the consumption demand of course all of us uh, uh, are happy uh, everybody is happy i, I would think that he, she has looked after yeah, all sections of uh, we're, we're just going to ask mr sanjeev puri who's coming and joined us just in a, in, a, in a sec i'm going to ask you exactly that same question because you would know about consumption demand and what's actually happening out there but before i come to you uh, monda spy still, still with us monda you were making a final point about some of the things that you think are unfinished agenda and which you would still have liked to have got done before we went to cross your mitab kant do you want to finish making the point you were making yeah the point i want to make is you know urbanization is key to india's growth because please remember urbanization creates concentration of human activity concentration creates specialization specialization increases of productivity that increases income india has not invested in our towns and uh, towns because we have this misplaced notion that india is a country of villages which is not true farmers don't want to stay in villages they're emigrating so the two, tier two, tier three, tier four uh, cities, where you have that urban infrastructure fund like you have for the rural side, where priority sector shortfalls can be put into the fund is very good, along with the change in planning. I think that's very good. And the focus ultimately on making sure more jobs are being created. You know, Vikram, we really must bust this myth about jobless growth and increasing unemployment that Shashi Tharoor always talks about. If you look at the EPFO, more than 9 lakh new people join the EPF every month and make a social contribution, out of which 55% are below the age of 25. They're all new jobs. Now, we are creating 1 crore to 1.15 crore new jobs as per the EPFO every single year. Yes, the salaries there are low because it's not going beyond 20 for about 80%. The balance are going up. So the midst of increasing unemployment should be shot down. What we need is higher income for these people. And for that, it will only come if we have greater development in tier two, tier three, tier four cities and in rural areas. So that block development chosen under the aspirational block scheme is very good. And I think uh, what is missing is a right. scheme for the big cities. M M you know, we need a big cities. You can't ignore Delhi, right. Bombay, Bangalore uh, and grow this country. I think that is a missing piece.